Revenge, government corruption, and the ironic power of modern technology are just one of the many themes that you're going to see in Zonkyo no Terror. And this week's episode, which happened to be the series finale, completely blew me away. It was both sad, beautiful, and hopeful all at the same exact time. It had all of the amazing production value that you've seen from the rest of the series, and it wrapped up everything nicely. There's still a little bit of mystery behind 9 and 12 when they went to the Institute as children and more of the details behind that, but I like the fact that it's kept vague because it allows us to sort of create our own interpretations for the series, and it also allows a lot of people around the world to see the series and put their own little spin on it, and it allows everybody to view it in their own special way. The thing I didn't expect about this series is how abruptly it would come to a close, especially at the end when both 9 and 12 are killed. And... I knew that it was probably going to end badly for them. I just imagined when Shibazaki found them at the very end of the episode, they were simply going to be arrested and then there would be a little bit of mutual respect between the two and maybe they would be able to be freed later on. What I didn't expect was the US forces getting ready to fly in in their helicopters and decide to kill both 9 and 12. But Nine's not going down without a fight. He actually is getting ready to pull off another bomb, which is in a nuclear power plant, which will cause some serious damage. But Shibazaki is able to talk him out of this. But this is the part of the episode that really shocked me, because all it is is just Nine telling Shibazaki to remember them, to remember what they did, why they pulled off these crazy terrorist attacks, because they wanted people to remember them, what happened at this institute. And it just fades to white when you see these birds erupting into the sky. You don't hear a single gunshot, but at the end of the episode, you get to see both 9 and 12 do have a gravestone that is set for them. And 12's death really shocked me. That was definitely one of the most sad deaths of the entire series because, you know, he did get to have his final moment with Lisa, and it was very satisfying because clearly I think they did have some sort of small romantic thing going on, but they didn't do anything really cliche with it, like there wasn't a kissing scene or anything. Mostly they just held hands and that was it. And they had a nice scene with uh, Nine at the very end of the episode when they went back to the Institute and they were sort of paying their respects to the other people who were in the Athena Institute. But when Twelve died, just it was so immediate. He was just shot fell to the ground and didn't have anything else to say and it just it, I don't know it just it really affected me it, it, it honestly is one of the most realistic and disturbing character deaths that I've actually ever seen in an anime series and it wasn't that it was overly violent or that it was it was just shocking it just came out of nowhere and there was no precedent for it and just I don't know it greatly disturbed me but just, the episode itself was interesting, too, because at the beginning of the episode, they pick up from where they left off last week, and they had this big atomic bomb, which is being lifted into the sky over Tokyo, and they're planning on letting it explode, actually, in the atmosphere, so that actually what it's going to do is all the radiation is going to go into space, and this massive explosion is actually going to cause this, like, big electromagnetic pulse, which is going to destroy all electricity in Tokyo, effectively sort of crippling the country, and it's really interesting how it happens because it's almost, like, destructively gorgeous, especially when Nine goes up to the top of this building to watch it explode, how it erupts into red, everybody's watching, and then suddenly it becomes this, like, Aurora Borealis, like, light in the sky, which is very ominous and a very clever metaphor as well. And I love the next shot when they show Tokyo after the fact, after it's been hit by this bomb, how it's just a ghost town. It's ominously quiet but it's also eerily calm as well. Like, there's something kind of, like, hopeful about it. And, of course, that's one of the themes of this week's episode, especially at the very end in that final scene where Lisa is actually paying her respects to both 9 and 12 by leaving some flowers, and then Shibazaki comes across this bridge, and that's the final shot of the show is this very quiet bridge in Tokyo, and all these feathers start to come up into the sky, and I'm already getting choked up again thinking about it just... It was beautiful. It was a gorgeous series. And I think that's the thing we can take away from this one. And it's also a very culturally relevant story. This is the type of anime you can watch 10, 20, 30 years from now. It's still going to be relevant. It's still going to have a good message and story to tell. And it had great characters who were just taken away from us in the final episode. And I, I, I knew something like that was going to happen. I expected much worse, to be honest. I actually thought... The bomb was going to go off in the city and everything was going to be destroyed. Maybe everybody would have left. But no, that actually didn't happen at all. And I thought that by the end of the episode, everything was just going to work out and it didn't. And that's another thing about this show. It sort of crushes your expectations. But 
it also allows you to enjoy every episode when it comes out because you never really know what's going to happen. Uh, otherwise, what's the rundown on this episode of Zonkyo no Terror? I think this series was a great, great show. Just, I'm almost kind of like speechless after the final episode. And uh, I will just say like a lot of the positives, it was gorgeous. Everything looked amazing, especially the backdrops. Tokyo at night looks so beautiful. Like that first scene when you see the helicopters coming over the city, it just makes it seem so grand and large and amazing. And I loved the color scheme at the very end of the episode when Shibazaki meets Sphinx for the very first time. I loved the, uh, the purple, like orange look of the backgrounds set against them. It just looked very dark and still calm at the same time. And then when the US forces came in, things got really, really dark and really energized, and that's when things got really tense. Um, I really liked the scene between uh, Twelve and Lisa, because she finds him at the beginning of the episode. He just completely passes out, and she's able to uh, bring him away. And then at the end of the episode, they have a really nice moment. And Lisa is fantastic. She's actually the character I thought was going to die. Like, I, I didn't see her living throughout the entire series, and she's actually the one who does. And that makes perfect sense because now she's able to sort of like take the lesson that she learned from them, pass it on to the future. And it's funny because she's still Lisa in this episode. She's still a complete ditz and really clumsy, especially in the scene at the very end when they're uh, having this moment where they're playing soccer and she can't even kick the ball towards them. It's just really, really goofy. And uh, I really like that scene because it sort of broke the tension in the episode a little bit right before it hit its final crescendo, which was amazing. Um, other things I liked about this episode was the fact that Shibazaki got his entire crew to help him out on this final mission, including his one bumbling, goofy sidekick. It was just really great to see him again and just to see most of the main cast come around for the uh, the final episode of the series, which was very shocking and interesting because their overall plan was not to destroy anything or to kill anybody, but to bring Tokyo back to a state of no electricity, back to the bare means. And it's sort of like the ultimate message, you know, that technology, although it's good for us, can ultimately end up hurting us in the long run. And this is a theme which has been done in many different anime and even just movies and books. This is a, a culturally relevant story, and uh, that's why I think it's so amazing. That, and of course, the production value is great. There's a lot of mystery behind the show, and uh, honestly, I think it was just a really satisfying anime experiment, and it's easily my second favorite anime of the year thus far. My favorite anime of the year is actually ending on Sunday, but uh, I just, I really love this one. It was very short-lived, uh, but it's the length was perfect. They didn't drag anything out. Every episode was important, every character made sense, and uh, just it was just a beautiful show. That's really all I can say about Zonkyo no Terror, Terror and Resonance. Whatever you want to call it, just watch this series. It is beautiful, it has fantastic production value, and it is most definitely worth your time. I'm going to give this episode right here a 5 out of 5. As far as the whole series goes, it's not exactly perfect. There are some episodes that are a little slower than others, but for the most part, this is a near-perfect series. So the entire show, I'm going to give a 4 out of 5. I just loved it. It was definitely one of the best anime experiences I ever had. And uh, it really makes me glad that I have this YouTube channel. Because before, I didn't used to watch as much anime. I mostly just watched action stuff like Naruto and Gundam and Dragon Ball. But when I started this YouTube channel, a lot of you guys have been able to suggest these anime series to me. And honestly... Like I said, if this channel didn't exist, I, I probably would have never watched Zonkyo no Terror, and I'm so glad that I did. It, it really blew me away. So, check it out, guys. Amazing series. You will not be disappointed. Thank you guys for watching my review today. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And remember, you guys can watch all of my previous Zonkyo no Terror reviews on our YouTube channel. They will be on our Zonkyo no Terror playlist. What did you guys think? of the final episode of the series. And what did you think of the entire series in general? Were you shocked by the ending events? Did you end up getting all teared up at the end? Please tell me with your comments below. And make sure to go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. That way you can see all of our latest anime and manga reviews. You can do that by clicking on this little button right up here. And you guys can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter.